Hey, it's Lady Lullaby again. I am going to share just a quick thought. I am beginning to study John Bede, and um, at first it seemed pretty self-explanatory because I'm familiar with the eight functions, but the further I got into reading his articles um, where he uses the archetypes of each eight functions in a particular person to study and analyze the unconscious and comparing um, the dreams of his clients to define and decide, you know, what is in conflict. I started scratching my head um, and recognized that he is more interested in psychology than typology. So just to give a quick little rundown, um, using the INFJ as an example, um, he has the first four functions, their archetypes are the hero, the good parent, the eternal child, and the anima or animus for females. And then there is the shadow functions. So the fifth function is the opposing personality, then the senex or witch, then the trickster, and then the demon. So for me, an I is my heroine, and that's where I'm most comfortable, and that's what saves the day in my life. Um, the good parent for me is extroverted feeling, and that is how I take care of others, but it isn't something that is very good at taking care of myself. And um, my INFJ dealing with emotions video, I think, is a good explanation of how the good parent can be used to help others, but not necessarily myself. Um, and then the eternal child is introverted thinking for me, which means that it's always childlike. Like, I can play with it and try to expand it, but it is not my most natural way of being, and I always will be um, grasping for the skill sets that those with stronger TI have. Um, and then the animus, my extroverted sensing. Um, this is definitely something that is less conscious, and it seems to be more like the id. You know, that's where most of my... Um, weaknesses shine is through my extroverted sensing um, and then my shadow functions my opposing personality is extroverted intuition and then my witch function is my introverted feeling function my trickster is extroverted thinking and the demon for me is introverted sensing so in trying to make sense of this I switched over to reading an article by Lenore Thompson and I'll put both of those um, things I'm referring to in the description below. But she says, um, to put this directly, the archetypal hero, the ego identity, who has successfully established a sense of self and assimilated the good supportive aspects of a parental figure will be compensated in the unconscious by what's been rejected as not part of this self. So she is saying that it's important to realize that Beeb's model is functioning from a um, perspective of complexes within our psyche and it's not saying that all of these functions always operate this way it's showing what happens when there is some sort of complex and your psyche is coming to defend you and to help you so she says the demon and trickster in this respect don't tell us how these two least conscious functions normally operate behaviorally as complexes, they're so far from the heroic self-image that they're more like intra-psychic messengers from the unconscious. So they tend to compensate our conscious choices largely when the ego has reached its limits. That is, when the ego is too fragile to maintain its conscious position, or when the ego has developed as far as it can and the person is ready to individuate. I think this is something that I'm noticing as I'm coming out of codependency. As an Enneagram 2 and struggling with codependency, the way that I normally took care of others was with my good parent function, my extroverted feeling, and um, my extroverted thinking is something that is not like me, that I, I, I have an aversion to it most of the time. But when I um, disintegrate into eight, Enneagram 2's disintegrate to eight, it seems like suddenly I have extroverted thinking and I and introverted feeling. Those two will come out and defend me. And um, I, it's unnatural and it will look to someone else like I'm not myself. And it's true. I'm not. Um, the trickster is called the trickster because its defensive operations always create a double bind. The ego is preserved at the considerable expense of full participation in life. 
What this looks like, however, depends a lot on the function a type has differentiated. So um, for me, when I, um, we'll go back. For me, the trickster is extroverted thinking, so it kind of does put me in a double bind. It's not who I am naturally, but it is something that kind of um, defends me when I've reached my max. And I think that um, introverted feeling used by an INFJ, I, I'm sticking to my core values and I'm defending it with my trickster. And, and it's when I'm in a bad place, you know, when I've just reached my max. And so I found just this teeny little beginning of understanding from these two theories to be very fascinating because I see the contrast between the two ways of handling psychology and typology as well as recognizing how Enneagram can also be combined to explain some of what's happening. And each model is trying to um, talk about similar things but depending on your model, um, you'll focus a little differently. And um, I am hopeful that I can, because I am more reductionistic, I like to have a favorite system, something that is um, something I can become more expert at. And right now, Linda Behrens seems to have a better balance of integrating temperament and MBTI and Beeb and all of Young's functions in a way that makes a lot of sense, particularly uh, the way that she talks about social interaction. Because I'm definitely a chart the course kind of person and my INTP husband is definitely a behind the scenes person. My ENTJ dad is definitely a take charge person and my ENFP sister-in-law is totally a get things going social interaction style. So um, this is just a little update of where my studies are right now. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'd love to hear anybody share what they have found in studies of any of these models.